Evolution is something that happens over millions and millions of years. And so our evolutionary instincts really haven't had much of a chance to change since then. People's decision systems aren't really adapted to be effective in optimal economic circumstances. You could imagine somebody chasing us or throwing a spear, that we can react to that kind of threat really instinctively. We have not evolved to make decisions about complex financial markets. Rationality means that people have consistent preferences, they have perfect willpower, they have perfect foresight, and they have unlimited computational abilities. But that's actually not realistic. Humans are boundedly rational. They often come close to making good decisions, but there's systematic mistakes that people will make. An example of this. If I were to offer you a penny that doubled in value every day for a month, or a million dollars, almost everybody who hasn't heard this example will choose the million dollars. After only five days, you're at 32 cents. After 10 days, you've just reached $10. It doesn't seem like it'll ever reach a million, but because it's a nonlinear system, it does. And in fact, you'd be making a lot more money with that penny that doubles every day than if you took the million dollars straight up. Gains are good, losses are bad, but losses are worse than gains are good. What this means is that people will avoid doing things that could lead to losses, even if odds are they're going to get a gain. If people are afraid of losing money in the stock market, they're not gonna think rationally about is this a wise investment or an unwise investment. They're just gonna say, I want out of this dangerous situation. The American people are concerned about the situation in our financial markets and our economy, and I share their concerns. When you see, let's say, individuals panicking, when they hear like a loud explosion, um, you see that the same in, in the stock market. This is true since the old time financial crisis, the Great Depression in the 1920s and 1930s. You see this in the 2008 financial crisis, where a few banks go down, you know, Bear Stearns closes down, Lehman Brothers closes down. And that's a perfect example of how these hurting and contagious effect can influence the whole market. Eventually, there's going to be smart investors who come in and recognize that there's a good value here and make money off of that market, off of that opportunity when prices drop. But the people who flee the market when prices drop are going to miss that opportunity to make money. We know that optimism makes people bold and go out and just try new things. If everybody's feeling similarly, you could have a crowd effect. The market could be behaving in this kind of collective emotional reaction to the situation. One thing that people like is easy. Easier to pronounce names do better on the stock market after initial IPO than more complex names. The three-digit ticker symbols, which can be either pronounceable or unpronounceable, can affect how well a stock does because people see it and like the easiness and that liking translates to an impression that the stock will do better than it really will. Nowadays in the stock market, it's probably more adaptive to be risk-seeking. At least historically, people who have been risk-seeking have done better in the market. But that's something that doesn't really come to us naturally because our ancestors survived and passed their genes along to us because they were not so risk-taking. Our brain just isn't designed to understand nonlinear systems very well. So instead, what real professionals do is they have formulas and algorithms and they calculate out how well various different investments will do. 